Uh, this is what you get in the kit. You'll have two triangles like this, and you're going, we're going to show you how to get the airframe built from it. Um, the first step is to just sort of get them lined up, pick the best edge you can join them up on. doesn't matter if they're a little bit dinged up. It'll all work out in the end. Um, I want to just put in a couple of pieces of alignment tape. I'm using packing tape, um, which we find works the best. I'm picking it up just a little bit so I get a nice tight joint so that'll when it settles down that'll be good and tight and a little bit right here same game but wrinkles it's not the end of the world this does not need to be perfect all right so now that i have that attached i'm going to go to the middle and just take the whole thing so now i have a hinged pair of uh, pieces of blue foam. I'm going to flip it over and now we just go and just do the thing. This is all lined up and beautiful and we're done. The next step is to put the plant, put the dimensions on there. So you can do that drawn up with uh, Sharpie is a good thing to have at this point. Um, I'm going to clean the rear edge a little bit. I think this is kind of a little bit on the sort of rough side, so I will just clean up the, the rear edge with a cut. I'm just going to take a sort of quarter inch off it, like this. You want to have a sharp knife? It cuts much better with a sharp knife. If it starts snagging, um, then you will. Um, end up tearing the blue foam, and that is uh, not so good. Okay. So I've neatened up the trailing edge, and I am now going to draw the dimensions of the aircraft. It is 21 inches. Uh, it's 23 inches, pardon, from uh, the Elvons to the nose. Yeah. So I'll mark that here on the center line. And it is 21 inches to the side. Which I will mark. Elvons are uh, measured to be two and a half inches up off of the center line. Two, or actually, two and a quarter. I'm measure, I'll mark this in a couple of places. One, two, and a quarter. One, two, and a quarter. And we will just mark them in like this. None of these dimensions are particularly crucial, just kind of get it roughly speaking to be this. All right. Now, it's nice to have a long ruler for this. We just want to draw to the 21 inch mark there. 21 inch mark is basically going to be there. Oops. And we want to finish out our triangle. So we now have essentially the outline of the plane, and we'll measure back from the nose 12 inches. That's going to be the beginning of the prop cutout, and that is here. 
All right. And that is 12 inches wide. So we will have to remain square with that. Go six inches out. Six inches out this way. It is two and a half inches long. So I'll just go ahead and draw that line. I'm just pretty much just going to eyeball this. It does not need to be perfect. We'll make it perfect when we attach the deck to it. And the center of gravity of the airplane is right here at the 12 inch point. So this is where we expect the plane uh, to balance. All right, now we're gonna cut the airframe out. Once again, sharpness is a big help on your knife. And away we go. If you want, you can keep going and get a complete delta wing, with little pointy elevons or not. I chop them off. Get less damage that way. So now that we have uh, marked out where the Elvon line is, we're going to uh, cut the Elvon free. And this is one of the more touchy elements of uh, creating this airframe. And what you want to do is cut on a bevel angle so that we can get free movement on the Elvon. So I'm going to take this uh, nice long uh, uh, straight edge we have here, and we just sort of we sink it in. And I'm going to go on a per Elvon basis and. Uh, and you can do it at an angle. It can, you don't want it to be vertical, you want it to be open. And it, you know, that's a good angle right there, or that's fine, but you don't want it to be vertical. You don't want to be super down either, but just like something around 45, 30 degrees, something like this, you just sink it in, and then you're just gonna go and uh, cut the whole thing consistently as you go, and um, you'll have half of the Elvon cut. Um, I'll do it again on this side. So this is, I've set it up, there's my edge, and we got our edge, but it really does need to be straight. This is the one straight cut that needs to happen on this. Well, there's a couple, but this is one of them. So there's a nice angle there, and I'm going to cut. Make sure the blade is sharp. You don't want to be snagging and having a jagged edge that you're going to try and tape up. All right, there we go. So we now have Elvons that are released. I'm going to go ahead and cut them down the middle. There's already a cut in there. And so you essentially just reverse the Elvons now. And we have a V in here, which is going to allow this Elvon to move up. So we have freedom of motion. And then on the other direction, there's no possible physical interference. So that's what we've done. So we're now going to turn this whole thing over. Like this. And do the same basic technique we used for the middle. Do a small bit of tape just to kind of get alignment right. I like this to be a tight joint. So there's the center line. I'll put it right there. You'll basically want about a quarter inch between each of the Elvons, so you can move it over right now. You can cut it again later, it's not a big deal. Um, to the other side, so that's about a quarter inch. It's a little bit off, but just eyeball it. It's not crucial. You just want there to be non-interference between the two. And then put a little more on this side, make sure everything's nicely lined up. Tight joint, nice tight joint. And now we're just going to make it all one single <laughs> tape. And just sit there. And we have a complete bottom hinge now. Cut it loose. Make sure 
matter. Fold it up. And cut the separator in between. And now we have ourselves L bonds that will give us up, down, turns. All right? So these are now, we now have control surfaces. You can see that there's a nice V shape that allows the L bond to go up. Now that we have the airframe, and this is the top, and the top is the bit with the, um, with the divot cut out for the uh, L bonds going up. All right, that's going to be important for appropriate control throw later. Um, we are going to attach the deck that we created in the previous video. And the way that works is you kind of want to center it, just eyeballing a little bit, and uh, centering over the, the, uh, the um, square we just inscribed in there. And the technique is quite simple. I like to put a little core plaster or something underneath to sort of receive the um, um, punching through. It goes a little faster. And you just need to get two of them in there, and you will be done in terms of getting alignment correct. So I will do this sort of incrementally, and then I'll do it faster. So this one goes through here, through here, and back around, and, and up. Okay, and make these holes, you know, appropriate size apart for the length of zip tie that you have. But this is about, you know, this is about an inch, and it works good. So the next one is going to be the important one because it's going to set all the angles right. I'm let, I am uh, going to try to keep this all fairly square, and I'll just pick one down here in the corner because that's going to be the most orienting um, of the possibilities. And put that through. So now we have an aligned deck, and we'll just put in more um, zip ties through to sort of round this out, make sure we have a good connection. I like to do about six zip ties for the beginner planes because they're going to take a lot of abuse. So I'll put another one up in the front here, important for appropriate control throw later. Now we just try to clean them up. All right. So we have a nice airplane, and we'll go ahead and cut out the prop hole. All right, now we're going to create some uh, control rods. Um, we love our customers, and uh, do that immediately by ripping all this paper off of this coat hanger. Throw it over your shoulder, and we're just going to cut this bit out. We we'll take the sweet spot of this coat hanger. Um, what we want to do now is put a U-bend in one end, which is basically going to be bending 90 degrees once, bending 90 degrees twice. So you have a little bit of adjustment, something that looks roughly speaking like that. Then about, I don't know, five inches down, I'm not going to even bother measuring. I'm going to put in a 45 degree bend like this and try to keep it in the plane of the 90 degree bend that you just put in. And then we're gonna do it again. Another 90 degree bend here. And then we're gonna straighten everything out so that I can't quite see exactly what's going on here. That's not perfect, but that's okay. We're willing to accept non-perfection. <laughs> it's supposed to be exactly straight, but, um, and that'll go straight back to the control horn. The length that we want, this is an adjust, the reason we do this is it's gonna add an adjustable length to the length of the um, control rod if we wanted to make um, hardware trim changes um, that are based on the length of this rod. And this allows us to either tighten it up or expand it based on um, what the exact trim is. 